Hey guys, Tony Rowe here, back with another rapid game against a an opponent I've already had, I believe, on my channel, ILG71. So I'm switching it up, I'm playing a Sicilian today. I don't want to continue with the all uh, <laughs> Alakine all the time channel, so I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, I could... I could whip out the killer Sicilian here. I think I'm going to play an accelerated dragon today. Mess around with this a little bit. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. It is Saturday, 12.43 p.m. Tony time. Truth be told, I woke up not that long ago. <laughs> Don't tell Vicky. <laughs> I, um... I tend to act like a little bit of a degenerate on the weekends, and yeah, this weekend <laughs> was no exception. So C3 seems weird, seems like a little awkward, but I do notice that now knight f6, e5, there is not queen a5 check picking up the pawn, so... One typical idea in the Accelerated Dragon is that in these types of positions, you can go knight f6, e5, knight d5, and sacrifice the pawn. And after bishop d5, c d5, queen d5, rook b8, black is ready to go bishop b7, he's got the open b-file, the two bishops are sort of operating full force here. And... You know, the e5 pawn is, in a lot of cases, a little bit loose. I'm thinking about doing that because there's not... I could go d6 and procure myself a relatively normal position as well. It's just that the... It feels like knight f6 should be the move, and if I'm not going knight f6... D6 just feels a little lame, is, is what I'm trying to articulate. And knight f6 and going for this pawn sack feels a little bit more principled. But it is riskier. So let's say I go down that line. Knight f6, e5, knight d5, bishop d5, c d5, queen d5, rook b8. And let's just say right, right now white castles. And I go bishop b7. Where does he go? Queen d4? Queen d4, d6 then. Probably is sufficient. Or queen d4, queen c7. Hitting e5, and if he goes f4, then something like queen c6 looks pretty strong. Hmm. Queen c5. So bishop b7, queen c5. Hitting a7. It's possible for me to just suggest the trade of queens. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure about that though. Queen c5 is kind of annoying, isn't it? Stopping queen c7, hitting a7. I don't see 
an obvious rejoinder to that. Rook c8, queen a7, queen c7 hitting this thing. Yeah, I'm just simply not sure about that. All right, I'm just going to... I'm going to waste five minutes and then play the simple move that I could have played in 15 seconds. <laughs> there was also queen a5 there. I looked at that briefly. So intending knight f6 without allowing e5 and maybe bishop a6 in the future. But d6 is is a little bit more flexible than queen a5. The the, the reason to, to, to think about moves other than d5 and the accelerated dragon is that in principle, when black holds back the d-pawn, you can a lot of times go d5 in one move. So the reason why I looked at things like knight f6 and the d5 pawn sack and stuff like that is I feel like if I play d6, I'm just getting a dragon. But in this case, this is a pretty good dragon. So... In general, white is really not encouraged to take on c6 in, in almost all of the open Sicilians. There are there are only a couple of places where that that is a reasonable way to play. Bishop g5. Looks awkward. There are a couple ideas here. The b2 pawn is now a little bit loose, so I can contemplate things like queen b6, queen a5 hitting the bishop, rook b8, or just the simple knight f6. Maybe he wants to be able to meet knight f6 with knight d2 and not block in the bishop. Well, I'm going to go knight f6. I'm not scared of bishop takes f6 at all, so. I don't think e5 is very good either. He can go e5. I'll probably take it and just go into the, eh, you know what? Maybe that is possible because <laughs> f7's hanging at the end. Oh, damn. <laughs> hmm. Did I get myself into a wee bit of trouble here? I guess e5, I can go knight e4. Hit the bishop and the pawn at the same time. <laughs> I was close to ha having kind of blundered there. Queen b3, interesting. All right, well. You leave me little choice, sir. Is d5 good? Probably not. Uh, d5, e d5, c d5. He's got this check. I'm not, I'm not even going to mess around with thinking about that right now. As the saying goes, I don't have time for that. So now it's interesting to go knight e4 anyway. Hit him with the old fork trick. So knight e4, knight e4, d5. Let's say knight c5, takes, takes. I'm not sure about that. I can also just go d5 right now. E d5, e d5, and he can never flick in bishop takes f6 because I take here with tempo hitting the queen. So he would have to move the light squared bishop back. I'm kind of liking that. Let's, let's uh, go for that. Principled, exploiting the fact that he took on c6 and allowed me this control over d5. So black should be very comfortable here. I think e d5, c d5, he, probably bishop d3 is better than, well, bishop d3 then bishop e6 maybe. But he, yeah, no reason to really take with the knight. I'm trying to look if there are ways that I can keep white's king in the center for a second. I'm not seeing it. Probably my next move is bishop e6 or bishop f5, depending on where his bishop goes. If he goes to d3, I'm obviously not putting my bishop on there. Uh, f5 square, bishop e6, and then 
I've got this discovery sort of idea and also rook b8 with tempo. So I think I'm, or do I go e5 first? That also makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Giving him the business in the center. Um, certainly more ambitious. Um, is there anything better? Let's do that. Let's let's get him here. If he takes, yeah, I mean, I can just take this way. I won't pre-move that. This is a standard game. <laughs> you don't really need to pre-move in standard games unless it's totally, totally obvious. Like for instance, in a long uh, a longer game, let's say like a game ninety or something, I might contemplate bishop takes f six, queen takes f six, queen d five, bishop e six or something for for a second to make sure there's not you know some raging attack after that or something. But in a fifteen minute game, I would capture this way pretty much all the time. F three. Man, taking a lot of liberties with this king. Really asking for it. Well, I'm going to go bishop e6. He'll probably play queen c2. Just to get out of dodge here. If he plays queen c2, I'm probably going to play queen b6. Cutting him off. That looks pretty good, no? He does have c4, but I don't think I'm worried about that. I think just rook a to c8, or even rook f to c8 is very reasonable, so... I like black's position. I think I have the positional trumps here. f3 was very weakening. Castle and queenside looks extremely risky. <laughs> just rook a to b8, rook f to c8, and I think at some point e4, d4, and or both are, are going to decide the game for me. <laughs> so now, now ILG71 has to figure out what he's doing about his king. Not not easy to, to really figure out because he, he just doesn't have the the coordination. Maybe bishop h4. Yeah, that's possible. I'll probably go rook a to b8 to gain one last move on this b pawn before he plays bishop f2, but... So maybe bishop h4, rook a to b8, um, maybe b3, rook fc8, bishop f2. Where would I put my queen? I don't know. A lot of reasonable squares. Queen a5, I don't know. Yeah, maybe queen a5 hitting c4. Looks extremely comfortable for, for black. And once the bishop is on f2, uh, maybe knight h5 to f4 is, is a good idea. Hitting g2, maybe threatening to grab the two bishops. Ah, I didn't see that move. Can I go queen c5? I'm I'm not trading queens. That's for certain. Um Yeah, I'm going to go queen c5. So now he has to think about d4 again and he still has the problems with his king. Shout out to the the Braminator, a uh frequent viewer of my channel. <laughs> Sweet handle too. So now rook a, rook a to b8 is on the cards again, too, so. I'm not certain that queen b3 doesn't just compound white's problems a little bit. Because my, my queen is really no worse, I think, on the c5 square for the most part. But his queen on b3, I might gain another move with rook a to b8 here in a second. And yeah, it's just becoming... 
kind of hard for for White to to finish his development. Okay, I get it. Knight f1, he wants to go bishop e3. The problem is you put your knight on f1, even after bishop e3, you can't castle yet, so. Um, it's starting to become, I think, important for me to look at, like, the, forth, the forcing, you know, death blow type moves, because white, I think white is just violating a lot of, a lot of principle, like, opening principles, and, you know, just... His pieces are very uncoordinated. His king is in the center. He's behind in development, so it starts to become a little bit critical for for White here. This is also how I get myself in, into problems in in these shorter time control games, though, is that I look for look for crushing blows, and there aren't like e4 here looks pretty good actually. Hitting the bishop, and if he takes takes, then I discover an attack on his queen also. There's e4, bishop e3. But maybe queen a5 or queen c7, queen c6, and still he can't really take. He can go bishop e2, I guess. But then maybe I have d4. Good lord. <laughs> uh, this could be the second pawn roller in, in two games here. E4, bishop e3. Let's say queen c6. Let's say queen c7. Queen c6 might allow bishop b5 at some opportune moment. So e4, bishop e3, queen c7, bishop e2, d4. Oh, that's just winning. I'm hitting this bishop here and hitting the queen at the same time. So e4, bishop e2 right away maybe. Ah, yes. And then if d4, he might have c takes d4. So that's a thing. But somehow I feel like e4 should just be good. I mean... e4, bishop e2. Ah, e4, bishop, e2, d4, hits the queen and the bishop at the same time. So if he plays c, takes d4, he uh, he loses the bishop. So, okay, let's, uh, I'm not going to think too much longer about this. e4 just looks very good. Ah, if bishop, e3, d4, he can play bishop, d4. Ah, no, if bishop, d e3, we I think I decided on queen, c7. <laughs> I'm, I'm confusing myself, yeah. And d4 looms. Yeah, all right, all right. Story checks out. I do only have four minutes, though, so, you know, the usual. The usual problems. But I think, um... I think that's an interesting thing ab about chess, is that there's kind of, like, this this internal, this is going a little bit meta and a little bit deep, but, you know, there's kind of like this internal physics to the game that I think I really like, you know, as an engineer, as a, you know, former research scientist or whatever, like, like, just like, you know, I, I grab a ball and I throw it up, uh, you know, physics governs the behavior of that ball. I mean, when you, when you take a space and you sort of arbitrarily divide it up into light squares and dark squares, eight by eight, 64 total squares, and you give, you know, certain pieces with certain sort of geometrical mathematical properties to them, you set them up in a certain way, there's like a, you know, you sort of govern kind of an internal physics of the game. And, uh, you know, better players understand that physics better. Like, you know, it it it's usually the case that when your opponent starts, like, violating principles, there's something there. Like, there's a punishment. Like, you can't just get away with anything. There's, like, you know... I, I hope I'm articulating my point, my point well, but... You know... Like, log logic sort of holds up in chess, you know? Like, 
the the laws of chess you know really do hold up it, it's it's nice you know my opponent sort of moves his queen 18 times it feels like in the opening puts a knight on f1 you know plays sort of like i think this kind of a little bit lame c3 move and you know that that's that's like a trigger for good players to start looking at forcing moves like you know when your opponent starts breaking principles like that that there should be something there like that that's what i'm getting at like when you're when your opponent does things that are wrong there are things there you just have to find them you know so i guess yeah it's actually i, I don't even know if, if if white can avoid losing a piece here f e d e hits the bishop and the queen at the same time i don't see any any rejoinder after that if he plays bishop e2 then d4 is a, is a double attack yeah i just i don't see anything pretty fun position actually and that this is a neat tactic i i almost th this is a case where I'm really glad that I sort of stopped myself and said, okay, Black's position is looking close to overwhelming and White's position, you know, has a lot of problems with it. A lot of hanging pieces and and loose pieces and uncoordination. Is uncoordination a word? But, and so I said, okay, like, let's look at some forcing moves. A lot of players, I think, and, you know, me in a blitz game, certainly, and almost in this game would play Rook A to B8 automatically. And it, it might not even be that bad of a move. It, it might also win somehow. You never know. Like, rook A to B A, queen C2. Maybe E4 is somehow still good. Or, um, actually, it, actually, that does look pretty good. Rook, rook A to, Okay. So he played a move. But <laughs> we, we can look at that after the game. I don't see what he's doing after this. But yeah, I mean, it, it, that was one of the cases where I think a, a very mechanical automatic rook move it w would have maybe been a mistake. It is maybe also still overwhelming, but I'm glad that I stopped myself and started looking at, you know, d4, e4, etc. It's been raining like crazy here the past two days. It's May in Cleveland, which means like the weather is starting to become serviceable and it's like kind of not winter now. So so <clears throat> I'm like really itching to to uh, get outside, play some blitz chess like, you know, outside at Starbucks, grab a tea, grab a low fat cinnamon swirl coffee cake. Actually, it's reduced fat. Sorry. Starbucks is very specific about that. Because it still has a shitload of fat in it. Excuse my French. It's just reduced compared to the normal one. All right, so let's take this thingy. Like G4, maybe. Rook A to B8, perhaps. Knight G4 looks pretty crushing. I'm just trying to do my best to keep this king in the center. And, and to just... Uh, keep my initiative raging to the point where he's just never going to be able to recover. I'm up a piece and I could simplify and, you know, just play a normal chess game, but I still, but White's King is still in the center and White still has like a bunch of loose pieces and stuff. And I think I'm probably going to win more material or I think that was, oh, that was a message. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got a resignation. No, it was a message. <laughs> So rook a to d8 makes a lot of sense. b2 is hanging. Um, even rook f to e8 right away looks pretty good. It, it's wholly possible that bishop c4 here, even though it looks like it hangs a piece, is winning. <laughs> because e3 is loose and like rook e8 and rook a to d8 are coming. B basically bishop e6 just opening up the e-file with tempo is the idea. So like bishop e6, if queen if queen c4, mm, yeah, maybe that's not so good. 
It might it might be good. But okay, I'm just gonna grab this free move here. I'm not gonna think too much about this. He has to keep his queen protecting the bishop so he doesn't have a lot of choice here. I can just take this thing. Queen takes and then here. I think he's just totally lost. I can take on h2 and be a real jerk. <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to. Okay, let's just take this thing. He's, uh... His king is just languishing in the center here. This is like... The absolute worst case scenario for, for for a king in chess. Stuck in the center. He can't castle short because of bishop d4. <clears throat> Castling long looks like total suicide. Castling long at least loses in exchange to bishop g4. There might even be better. Like bishop f5 looks pretty pretty powerful. Um, let's just take the exchange. I'm going to be lazy about this. Going up a rook is very much sufficient. And if his queen moves to a square where he doesn't protect e5, maybe queen e5 is very strong also. Just looking to crunch all of the bones on b2. I don't really want to give up this bishop for this rook on d1. This bishop seems like a monster on f5, but I'm honestly, with, with 2 minutes and 13 seconds left... What I don't want to do is think about like trying to win in the, the most adorable and strongest way with bishop f5 somehow instead of just taking all of his stuff <laughs> and and winning winning easily. So All right, let's play rook e2. Just pin the knight to the b2 pawn. Maybe threatening bishop h6 at some point. Maybe queen d6 is a threat. <laughs> this game could theoretically end with me going queen d6, him going something like queen c2, and then me going bishop h6. And he runs out of defenders. <laughs> Which would be somewhat humorous. Okay, and he, yeah, white resigns. There's just, yeah, there's, there's nothing here. So let's take a look. Not the most typical accelerated dragon I've ever seen. Um... So e4, c5, knight f3. I was a little bit... I almost played uh, g6 here because uh, anytime you go knight c6, you have to reckon with the possibility of the Rosalimo. And this is a real chess move. I mean, this is not like... This is an anti-Sicilian by name, but but I think by top-level reputation and, uh, you know, theoretical reputation, this is no worse than entering uh, any of the open Sicilians after... Um, 3d4. I mean, like, the Sveshnikov is so well respected and so hard to beat at the top level that I think bishop b5 in the future might become the main line. Like, it, it might be the more respected chess move just because it leaves a little bit more room for uh, creativity and uh, research at home and it leads to less forcing, more positionally complex positions, I think. Whereas in the Sveshnikov, um, you know, the lines are extremely linear and extremely forcing. Like, you know, you reach this position in the Sveshnikov almost by force nowadays. I mean, none of the deviations are, are really good at all for, for white or black. And then, you know, there's really only knight d5 or bishop takes f6. And after knight d5 here, here, there's really only c3 or c4. And... Again, the lines are extremely linear. So like after c3, castles, knight c2, bishop g5, a4, takes, takes, a5, bishop c4, rook b8. Um, you know, thousands of games have reached this position. And theory extends on from here very many moves. And in, in correspondence chess, like this position has been worked out to like a draw, essentially. And, you know, there's also c4. But, okay, I mean, my point is made. The lines are extremely forcing, extremely linear, and they're starting to, you know, become researched to, like, sort of an extreme depth. So, um, unless you have some new ideas in the Sveshnikov, a lot of people are going, you know, bishop, uh, b5. But, okay, I, I wanted to play the Accelerated Dragon. I like the Accelerated Dragon a lot, actually. Um, 
the one so-called downside to the accelerated dragon of course is that white can play the the Maroxy bind with c4 and of course black's brilliant idea to go d5 in one move is <laughs> for, forever thwarted uh, essentially but i think these positions are still interesting i mean maybe they're a little bit more drawish than other sicilians but i don't think that let's say you know the, these positions are unwinnable for black for instance um i think that they there are still some interesting things here like um one idea is to go, is it here first? Yeah, takes, takes, and then a5, I think, is a, a recent idea, or is it bishop e6 first? No, 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 I'm, I'm an idiot. It's, um, it's, uh, knight f6, knight c3, takes, takes, yes. And then after d6, bishop e3, bishop g7, queen d2. Or bishop e2 first, castles. Now white has to do something about knight g4, hitting the queen, hitting the bishop. Queen d2, uh, then a5. This is a move that I like quite a bit. The idea is to go a4 and clamp down on the white queen side, and then play queen a5. Bishop e6, rook f to c8, etc. So I think that line's kind of interesting. I also think that in this line that I played um, here, you can go bishop d7 or knight d4, whatever. This is, like, very popular, extremely popular. Bishop e3. White usually is not uh, all about exchanging the dark squared bishops because it it leaves him with a really... Watch this. Bam! Bad bishop on uh, e2, So and, and a lot of weak dark squares, so he, he typically plays bishop e3. And then after knight c5, rook a to b1. Um, I think even like e6 here is kind of an interesting move. And the idea is to, to post up the bishop on e5. So after rook fd1, it looks like black has made a horrible positional mistake with e6, leaving the d6 pawn really weak. But after bishop e5, uh, black has sort of vague ideas about going maybe queen h4. or. Um, but yeah, I think this position is interesting. And the, the tactical point is that it looks like for a hot second that f4 is kind of strong, but bishop c3 and e4 hangs. So it's actually really hard for, for white to do anything about this uh, d6 pawn because f4 is essentially always impossible. And so this bishop gets to sit here and black gets sort of a nice dark squared blockade. I think this position is interesting. Okay, so but bishop c4 and bishop g7 is sort of the obvious move and... Um, wow, white score is really bad in this line. I wonder why that is. So if bishop... I, knight c6 is a clear concession. I don't think this move is very good. Um, just this, and I think black is totally fine. Computer thinks white is slightly better, but pr practically speaking, I think black shouldn't have any problems. So if bishop e3, why is this move order bad? Knight f6, knight c3... Okay, it's not. It just transposes. Okay. Sometimes opening explorers do weird things here. We're like, it shows 14 moves here, 14 games, but those are only the games that don't transpose back to uh, knight f6, knight c3, or like bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3. Those are all the games that don't transpose back, which, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, after, after bishop e3, knight f6, if white's not playing knight c3, he's probably playing a pretty crappy move, so, okay. So knight c6, b takes c6. It, it would be far more common for white to play here. Bishop e3, knight f6, bishop c4, and after castles, bishop b3. This is a main line of of the uh, accelerated dragon. And if you watched my uh, Reddit opening of the week series, I covered this position in reasonable detail, and the Maroxy bind in reasonable detail. I was planning on going either d5 here, which is an interesting pawn sacrifice, the idea is that after e takes d5, knight a5, black is just trying to get his pawn back, usually with the two bishops to boot. So you could imagine if, for instance, like, white plays kind of a lame move. Like, if white just gives his pawn back, like, let's say castles, takes, takes. If white plays, knight takes b3 is much better, obviously, because uh, it protects the pawn. But black's idea is, like, that this position is just better for black. I have the two bishops, a very sound solid pawn structure and there's just nothing wrong with my position so 
Um, that's the idea. White can, of course, make it a little bit harder to to um, win the pawn back. But there's also this really funny move, rook e8, um, which I was going to play. And I explained the idea behind this move in detail in my Reddit opening of the week series. I'd refer you to that. Um, but yeah, it was played in um, one or two games in the showdown in St. Louis between uh, Para Margin Negi and Hao Yifan. Um, you can see this game here. I think she got perfectly reasonable positions. I think this is a very kind of funny, funny, interesting idea. Um, okay, but knight, knight c6, b takes c6. I think c3 is a little bit uh, dubious. I wanted to play this move, and after e5, I wanted to go knight d5 and go into this pawn sack. Oh, bishop a6. No. I totally blanked on this move. I thought this 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 was forced, rook b8. And it looks so enticing, too, because bishop b7 is coming. I, deep down, I thought that, that black had enough compensation here. I couldn't work it out, though. I couldn't, I couldn't convince myself that it was true. I looked at bishop b7, queen c5, and I thought white was a little bit better, which the computer agrees with. I did not see the subtlety that queen c7 is possible first. Then bishop b7... Stopping queen c5. Yeah, and, and maybe black has enough, enough comp here. But even better is this move is crushing. Uh, <laughs> dang it. Okay, well, good to know. That's annoying. That's really annoying. Okay, but I played d6. Bollocks. All right, let's turn off the opening explorer. I think we're, 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 we're well out of opening theory here. Queen b3. Really? No human would literally ever co even contemplate this move. What a sick, sick move. Oh, the bishop's trapped after d5. That is slick. <laughs> That's hilarious. Ah, uh, chess is hard. <laughs> That's awesome. I wish I saw that. That's a sweet tactic. Uh, if I was a coach, I would, like, save positions like this. You know, this is a gold mine. Like, who... Like this is just a this is a tough move. Like, no any normal human being is gonna go like, okay, does d5 work? D5, okay, maybe there there are problems after this. Or you know, okay, maybe maybe because e6 is positionally kind of ugly, I have to go castles. This is hilarious. Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, but a anyway, I I think this position is extremely bad for white as well. This is sort of a, a again a triumph of of a flank opening here. Just trade off your C pawn for the D pawn. And, you know, of course, because he gave me another central pawn with knight C6, C, C6, B, C6, rather. Yeah, just two center pawns to none, and white is suffering for it. His pieces just have no scope now. And F3 has to be close to the losing move. I bet, you know, Lee Chess's computer only goes up to, like, depth 18, I think. I bet if I let my computer sit and let it get up to, like, depth 30, it would, it would probably pronounce white already losing or something because this is just positionally is totally overwhelming i think and white compounds his problems i think by going queen b3 and moving his queen again and after queen c5 it's it's hard to find a, sol a solution for for white knight f1 i think is 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 mostly well intentioned you know bishop e3 is a good idea i thought about um Bishop h4 here. Yeah, it does allow this check, though. But I also just thought about rook a to b8. And after, like, b3, rook fc8, bishop f2, queen a5. That This is what I thought about in my head. But yeah, it, it looks like... Why is this so good now? Takes, takes. Ah, yeah, this move is good. There's this uh, queen e3 lurking, and there are also some problems on c3. So, like if e5 takes, takes, knight takes. Oh, I thought knight takes here was good. And then there's this check, and c3 is hanging, <laughs> which looks crushing. Yeah, so e4 is good. I mean, so bishop h4 is too slow. Not surprising that this move is too slow, but... But yeah, after e4, he's just he's just lost. Bishop e3 doesn't solve anything, I think. B3 
because then bishop e3 actually sets up white for a second discovered attack. But if he just goes bishop e2, uh, then d4 anyway. I failed to see this uh, at first, but d4 hits the bishop. Oh, he does have queen e5, queen b5, though. I didn't see that. So what do I do then? Uh, still, still a ton of problems. I wonder if I can take and then rook b8. Yeah, I thought a4, but I even thought maybe a6. And just everything is falling apart here. Yeah, this looks really bad. Takes, he's sort of forced to take here. Oh, he can't, I'm hitting the bishop, yeah. Yeah, this is ugly. <laughs> it's very ugly. Already it's just, yeah, it's just losing. I mean, I even thought about this. Yeah, because it just, um, <laughs> sadly, it, it's just, I, I thought this move. Oh, this is hanging. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. I mean, it just, I mean, White's, White's position is just totally, totally indefensible. I mean, his king is just so unbelievably weak and stranded in the center that Black can literally just play anything. I, I thought about this, too. Queen b3, yeah, rook b8. I don't think he would go queen b3, maybe queen a3. <laughs> okay, this is just the rub-ins. That's funny. Yeah, th this is going to be made very quickly after this in here. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, and th this is kind of what I mean. I mean, like when... When your opponent's position is is this bad, there are things there, and you just have to you know find them. Like it's just a matter of sort of finding them. Like rook d two. Okay, a, a simple uh, removal of of the of defense, but still, yeah, and resigns. So, um, pretty solid game, I think. Um, a good example of really like punishing violations of opening principles. I think knight c6 is kind of a second best move. Everyone kind of knows you don't you don't want to give black this c6 pawn in the Sicilian and that you know d5 is sort of always black's goal in the Sicilian, so helping him a little bit is not to be recommended and then I think this c3 move um it, it's just better to put the knight on this square. Uh, much more active. This this c3 move really I think bungles up White's development to a, a pretty significant degree, and you know, in in and of itself, it's also not a development move. So he clearly wanted to play Bishop G5 and not allow Bishop B2, I guess, and and go Knight D2. But um, yeah, I mean, this this takes a move. It's not a developing move, and you know, D2 is not a good square for the Knight anyway. Really, G5 is not a not a good square for the Bishop either. So. Um, yeah, and then, you know, queen b3 is the first of many queen moves. Queen c2, queen b3, and then, you know, knight f1 is essentially the last straw. So f3, extremely weakening to the king side, not a developing move, c3, and tons of queen moves. You can see that white is has very many problems with his king, and yeah, I mean totally uncoordinated pieces, a complete lack of harmony, and then, yeah, it's just really... Black has total control of the center. It's just up up to Black to find the... the, the final <laughs> execution, really, so... Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be back with uh, more content. Um, like I said, I'm going to be starting some... Some type of opening series uh, within the next week, probably, I'll start posting videos um, this week. So now's your last chance to cast a vote. Uh, there have been, there's been one vote casted for Alakine's Defense, one vote uh, casted for the Leningrad, and one vote casted for the Triangle, and one vote casted for 
don't make opening videos, <laughs> make, make, uh, you know, middle game instructional videos. So, um, if you, if you have a vote one way or the other, uh, speak now or forever suffer for the next month or so as I release opening videos on something you don't, you don't care about much. So, um, okay. I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.